Chris Felkin and Bob Bruce. This is Eyewitness News. St. Anthony, New Brighton, and Moundsview were the hardest hit by high winds and a tornado last night. Shock and chaos are the best words to describe the scene in those northern Twin City suburbs. But it was far from over last night. This morning, another line of heavy storms moved through the metro area. This time, the western suburbs were the hardest hit, particularly the city of Long Lake. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Cindy Bricado is still on vacation this week. Leaving the news, the aftermath of the devastating storm that ripped through our area in the last 24 hours. My colleague, Stan Turner, reports now live for us from St. Anthony, one of the heaviest hit areas, I understand. Well, Karen, it's really hard to believe that just a few hours ago it was hot and sticky out here. Right now, a strong, raw, cold wind is blowing through here, making cleanup efforts very difficult. Emergency crews have been out here virtually all night all day trying to clear away the debris, the mess left from that tornado, the powerful tornado that cut through this Apache Plaza shopping center area last night. To give you an idea of the hardest hit areas in the metro area, here's a computer graphic showing the storm's path last night. Now that's followed by another line of heavy storms that moved into our area this morning. Today's storms produced heavy winds in excess of 75 miles per hour that heavily damaged areas west of the Twin Cities. We'll have a report on that damage in just a moment. But the best way to describe the St. Anthony area here last night, immediately after the twister touched down here so quickly, is chaos, utter chaos around here. Down power lines made the area dangerous as residents came out to survey the damage. Firefighters and police officers from more than a dozen metro areas, they rushed to the uh, stricken area to help. Streets were filled with people searching frantically for their loved ones. And home and business owners alike felt that sinking feeling as they looked out at the damage that just a moment of furious wind caused. 88-year-old Frances Schlag is the only victim of the storm here so far. She died when part of her home collapsed on her. At least 30 others were injured, many by flying glass and other debris, but only a few of them remain hospitalized with their injuries tonight. Now, in the meantime, we can tell you that the real job begins, the task of cleaning up and beginning a monumental mess here. Here's a report from Carolyn Brookter. It was the light of day that made the Twister's destruction even clearer. Apache Plaza was a maze of broken glass that had been literally blown out of buildings. Store owners and managers were in a state of disbelief. I feel numb, real numb. I was inside last night and I got a chance to look around. I couldn't see a lot, but there's a lot of damage in there. A lot of water damage, lots of glass, a lot of wind damage, merchandise laying all over. Throughout the day, members of the National Guard secured the area along with several local police and fire departments, many of whom had been here all night. So our plan here today was first of all to address each structure with the shopping center and then also with the uh, resident in terms of the damage in the residential area. Taking step by step, block by block, and setting up crews to go through and search and make sure that there was no people that we missed in the darkness of last night. A few blocks away, residents tried to salvage what they could. For Mary Ella, there was little left of the home she and her husband had lived in for 25 years. All my pretties that I brought home from all the different countries we visited, they're all gone. All of our 45th anniversary gifts are gone. Nothing left. Probably one of the most devastated areas is here at 33rd Avenue Northeast, where we see what used to be Johnson's Floral Shop. The shop's roof was completely blown off, and most of the building had been leveled. Still, people are thankful that it wasn't worse. Carolyn Brookter, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. And that's not bad enough. The damage continued today. This time in Long Lake, Minnesota, that's about 12 miles to the west of the Twin Cities. And again, the residents were taken by surprise. Lindsay Strand reports. Just before 10 o'clock, winds in excess of 75 miles an hour ripped through a residential neighborhood of Long Lake, downing stately pine trees and power wires. 23 homes were damaged, but miraculously, no one was injured. The twisted debris that remained suggested a tornado had touched down, but none of the residents saw a funnel cloud. Instead, they and, uh, described seeing like sheets, sheets of rain. I mean, they were like about 10 feet long, just rolling in, and it blew the, the, the door I was on with the house started shaking, and things were just flying at us, and mailboxes were coming around, and I just dove downstairs and took cover. Long Lake firemen went to work immediately to protect the roofless homes from further damage. But Long Lake was hit with bad luck twice. Two hours after the first storm moved through, the clouds blackened again. 
Fortunately, the second storm was mild in comparison, but for some, the damage had already been done. Lowell Mickelson was set to close on the sale of his home today. After the storm, his real estate agent stood looking at the yard of uprooted trees, and Mickelson wondered if the sale would go through. Sure hope so. I sure hope so. But even Mickelson felt lucky that the storm causing so much damage had left the people of the community untouched. Lindsay Strand, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Now the storms did not spare rural Minnesota. There was plenty of tornado and hail damage in outstate Minnesota as well. Some of the most significant occurring west of Hoffman, Minnesota, near Alexandria. Now we sent a reporter Tom Garrison out there, and he now is standing by with a live report from Grant County in western Minnesota. That report live via New Star 5. Tom? Stan, you know, when tornadoes strike rural areas, far fewer people are affected, but the damage can be every bit as devastating. Only about 15 farm families were affected here in Grant County, 20 miles west of Alexandria. Winds clocked at at least 65 miles an hour whipped through here last night and are still quite strong today. The Lee Hedstrom farm was one of the hardest hit. Farm machinery was thrown together with tree limbs like so much tossed salad. A car was thrown 30 yards and demolished while one right next to it with a person inside was untouched. There were at least two miracles here. Cows locked in their stanchions in what used to be this dairy barn were relatively untouched. None were killed. And Lee Hedstrom and six others survived being buried in their basement. We all got to the southwest corner of the basement and lay down taking the air down there for at least two minutes at the most when it hit. What did that sound like at that at that point, and what was going through your mind? Well, most at first there was so much pressure; it felt like your ears were going to pop, and it just kept getting more and more pressure all the time. And finally, when the glass started busting the house, and it kind of just seemed like the pressure let up, and and it was just a ferocious roar. At the other farm, similar destruction. 13 cows were killed at the Roger Quick Farm, but only minor injuries for the Quick family, which is struggling to get a roof on before nightfall. At the Dennis Winter Farm, there is no roof to replace. The house, a total loss. Power crews, which have worked 30 hours or more straight through, have been hampered by lines covered up by water. And the cleanup continues at this hour. We'll have more on the story tonight on the update at 10. Stan? Now, here in the Twin Cities area, we can tell you that many people last night we're talking about didn't know about the tornado until it already touched down. That's because in many areas, warning sirens failed to go off, not because they weren't activated, but because they just were not functioning properly. Frank Mann tells us more. Unless you happen to be watching television or listening to a radio, there's only one way to tell if a tornado is nearby. In St. Anthony, many people didn't hear a siren, probably because one never went off. And in Bloomington, the same situation. At least five sirens failed, and no one really knew why. A couple of months ago, we had uh, the drill, the tornado warning day, and this siren didn't go off. And that had us really concerned. Because if they're going to have a drill and it doesn't go off, then what happens when we do have a tornado like last night and we don't hear it? The National Weather Service is one of 55 places in the state where sirens can be activated. Yet last night and this morning, the Weather Service turned on its sirens, and the only thing that could be heard right across the street was the howling of the wind. If it didn't activate here, where else did it not activate? And this was our point of concern. I don't know. Civil defense officials blame the problems in St. Anthony on power outages. As for Bloomington, they say there must have been something wrong with the phone lines which carry the alert. Yet Northwestern Bell says no problems were detected when it investigated the situation this morning. We had no circuits locked out. All of our facilities are in and working, and we're working this morning. In last night? Yes. These sirens are set to go off whenever winds approach 75 miles an hour or whenever a tornado is sighted. Right now, the decision to set off a siren rests with each locality, which in turn takes its cue from the National Weather Service. The present system has been operating for 30 years. Civil defense officials say a new system may be forthcoming one that uses a radio frequency rather than a phone line. Frank Mann, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. We're back here live now. It's right behind me, right there where that vacant spot is. That used to be a house. That's where Mrs. Schlag was killed last night when part of the house fell in on her. Geographically, a rather small area out here, Karen, but the intensity of the winds, incredible. Estimated perhaps as high as 150 miles per hour. Back to you. Really something, wasn't it? Thanks a lot, Stan. Very nice job. 
Well, now the question is, are we finally out of the woods? And the person to answer that is, of course, Dennis Belkin. Dennis. Well, Karen, I think we are out of the woods. The storms which came through this morning and produced all of that damage in Long Lake has now barreled all the way into eastern Wisconsin, passing into Lake Michigan. Still a lot of severe weather, a couple of tornadoes west and north of Milwaukee, but so far no damage reported. Closer to home on the color radar, no significant rain or snow or anything taking place at least within 143 miles of the Twin Cities. But, brother, do we have wind. Wind gusts during the last couple of hours have been anywhere from 40 to 50 miles per hour across southern Minnesota and western Wisconsin, and a high wind warning is still out through the evening hours for southern Minnesota, including the Twin Cities. It'll remain very windy, so be careful if you're driving in small cars. More on the weather in just a couple of moments. Thank you, Dennis. We'll be back in a moment with some news not related to the spring storms, including a report on mass arrests at a rally against Honeywell. When the sun comes up this Saturday, the prices at Slumberland are going down.